Uh, welcome back to the second episode of the saving of the last runaways and this time we're going to talk about the custom audio electronics Bradshaw switching so we know that in the first video we talk about the rocktron rsb Brett's Bradshaw switching and i believe um i covered like how dance did the patches and so on um this is like the second part of that of that video which is explains the the piece that dance has um which is the the there are like two pieces actually um one is the patch bay and then the the second uh rerouting out patch panels coming up from the rocktron so what we have here today here the first piece is the um, first patch panel which is from the left to right we got the rock mod a and b and bookie studio preamp a and b which is these two are the um switching the channels between clean or the rhythm or the dirt part and then rock mod input and output and then the boogie studio preamps input and outputs and the power amps and then into the amps i believe this is like the second power amps um, as is stated on the back and this is passed through from the amplifier and what is nice about this too like there's like a controls to the amp level um, so this is kind of like nice thing that uh, Bob did at for for the rig and then the last interesting piece is the juice extractor I believe this is from Rocktron um, juice extractor uh, the combinations between Alan Holtzworth and um, uh, Rocktron which is this is works as a line out split from the amp uh, and then going through like four or five different outputs. Nowadays, like we get like a similar to what two notes torpedo life or the load box. So back in the days, I think like this one of the product that um, many LA session players using it to um, to extract the input outputs from from the amps. So. I believe the notable player was like uh, John Sykes. So he also using one of it. Well, and of, of, of course, like obviously Alan Holsford. So anyway, look at on the back, have a similar input output systems. Uh, as you can see here, the input output to the M, it says like power M2. Either this can be for the um, section send and return for the power M of the M, and then this is like going to the power M, like VHT or uh, studio preamp. I'm uh, sorry, um, for the 290s. Or, well, back in the days, it was in like the 290s, probably like more like VHT or mainly like I, I believe there was like PV2 studio classic or something like that power M. So that's what it's going through and then um studio preamp input output and rock mod input output and then the channel switchings for the boogie and rock mod so mainly dan's using um this as a, like a patch bay now i did um unscrew the inside for us to better have like a better inside how it looks like on the inside the box so as you can see here inside the box is mainly a bunch of cables that's straight through going from the um, front to the back so i think this uh, box works as a patch panel um, as an extension of the uh, rockton rsp so you can go inside in and then go to the back patch it on the back on the back of the m or you go from here, go back to patch it to the uh, RSP and then RSP going to the studio, uh, rock mod or studio preamp. So something like that. So this gives a clue like what is coming back and then what is going to get through. Now, uh, moving on to the second piece of the unit is the um, this guy. So this is like a little bit bigger than the other one. And then this definitely is like the connections and I already open up a little bit. So let me try to get rid of that. Um, so what is this? This is A and B, uh, rock mod boogie, mimic that. And then there's like a Marshall send and return. 
and then there's like a rock mod 2 uh, for the input and outputs and return studio preamp this is the main systems not sure like why there are like the two main systems here and then there is like a pre-volume for send and return um i believe this also relate might be related with the um uh the volume control at the boss and then post volume i believe like this is like after the juice extractor or something um after after the the amps gets like line out or something now on the back this is which is the, the, the interesting piece over here there's like a left ground i think like this is for grounding scheme and then this is on the left is the uh extensions from the rockthorn rsp so if you read the manual rockthorn rsp has the patch extensions on the back that you can plug it in and then extend it with another unit and then um this i believe the XLR outs face in face out uh system r2 out one c1 c2 pause volume really like a um similar design like the patch the first patch and then um marshall pre-volume l2 l3 not sure what the l2 l3 is but i assume like this is going to the um to patch to the the unit to the uh rock mod in the studio pm pre-volume and then interestingly like this is like probably cable and then from wireless so there's like pre-volume and then um in and out and then from wireless now interestingly enough there's like a two transformers over here i think this is to um uh eliminate the harms throughout the, through the link so that's quite interesting and then classic the um the line selectors now as we can see here there's like a one missing here not sure why but um this is yeah it's just mainly like it's saying here like a I don't know like a custom audio electronics like the old pcbs oh, it's actually not missing i'll take that back it might be over here for the mn 4049 b so it might be that and then um switchings yeah it's it's uh quite interesting here like from the post volumes going over here which is the just straight patch and then from the pre-volume pre-volumes going to the to the board and then uh system system like um patching through over here going to system just patch straight through and then from the boogie going to the board looks like uh rock mod the same thing and then uh looks like marshall too so yeah but the mainly like if you look at this the a and b it goes from here to here so it's gonna take some time to study this um what it does but uh overall yeah these are like the two pieces of the um dan's last remnants so i think that's uh oh this is more interesting so there's like apparently like on the top it says like direct this is going direct so on the mixer um it has a saying that uh, direct was coming up from the TC2290, SPX, even type, and then there's like a direct. So in the PASIC Unity mixer, it has a, a label that seems like it, it directs out. So it might have relation with that for directs out. But um, anyway, I think uh, that's pretty much it for the second episode. I hope it gives you like inside what it is and then uh, stay tuned for the next episode thank you